artist soul from the planet. This one straight to a boy them. You better press it, no connect. Left boy a shake and a fret. And you P45 if you can it. Fire red and dead, nigga. So we do not want to expect too much more I'm your host L, and this is the hottest station on the planet, Fire Station. Today, we're lucky enough to be interviewing Neville Morrison. Blessings, blessings, thank you. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. <sighs> and when people normally ask me that, then I, 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 I get stoned. <laughs> okay, tell me how you, you, you came into the music industry. Well, from a young age, I had a passion for music. I see my brother them singing, you know, but none of them really ventured into it. So I actually started doing some talent shows back in Jamaica, and then I recorded for Powerhouse label, George Pong, and um, I think I did one for a label called Wisdom. That was my first step into it. But then when I came here, I hooked up with Sax and them. I decided to take it a bit more seriously. Okay, so how old did you have? Ah, Where did it come from? When did it start? <laughs> That's a good question. I know some people would always say it's always in me, but it wasn't, you know? I, I think while I was at school, yeah. I always liked perform I just liked performing. And I remember the music called me Lika Dennis Brown, you know, I always say, you lot can't pay me, you know what I mean? But it was like that, you know? Okay. So, so yeah. So it went from school? And yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. School and then testing myself to see if I really had it. Because, as I said, doing a talent show in Jamaica, you, you must know, it's not, it's not a nice thing. No. It, 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 you know, we need more like that. They, if you can't sing, you know, you know but you, you, you're getting to know about it. They keep it real. Mm -hmm. So then you moved on to sound systems. Um, I wouldn't say sound systems. Yes, I used to go on sounds and sing. When I came here, I did that with um, Saxon also. But luckily, Dennis had a label also, which was Saxon Hit Factory label. So we had quite a few artists. Me, Roger Robin, B Candy. Mikey McLean, and there was uh, your Papa Lever and all them people, the other DJs, yeah. Daddy Colonel, them. So I came into a house, you know, filled with music. So it, it was inspiring for me yeah. to even even see that. What was your first release, and what was the name of your first album? Um, I did my first release was "Gotta Make a Change." Yeah, um, it goes. Baby, I'm tired, so tired of this living. Yes, I gotta make a change. So, me and Roger did that. I can remember, recall sitting on the studio and uh, studio floor in the night, in the hours of the night, and we're just vibing and we start jamming that key, and I just started hooking up. So, 
then it's decided to release that one. Um, I can't even remember. I did, we did we did something with Jungle Rock as an album, but not many. Okay. We just mainly put our singles, hit singles. Loads of them. Though. Luckily. Did you, you say just? Like like no, no, no. I was fortunate to have quite a good singles because I, I think I was writing them times, writing good. Yeah. I was writing good tunes. <laughs> I hope I still am. How did your family feel about your career choices? Well, put it like this, my mum never got to see me, neither my stepdad, both passed, um, my brother, yeah, when I went, when I go to New York, they know what I do, um, other than that, cousins and relatives here, they see me, but you know, the people who I really wanted to take note, because I remember my stepdad used to say to me, why stop your eyes, you are not going to cut some record, <laughs> and, <laughs> He used to blaze us, you know, so it would have been a dream for him to even see me. Yeah. He did go and do what he told you to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> would you tell the family, the Fire Ridge family, the name of some of your hits? Um, people know um, Best of Me, Giving You the Best of Me. Um, people know Crying, um, True Friends. We did. We had some other chart songs, but not as hits as like these ones that I record. Because when we did um, Crime, that was like 17 weeks at number one. Um, True Friends, 14 weeks at number one. Best of Me was the one that kind of groundbreaking for me because a lot of people love that tune. Okay. Charted at number one, you know what I mean? So it was kind of good. Yeah. Took 14 weeks to chart. But yeah, it took 14 so, weeks to chat. Uh, me and Peter and Gail had this bet about um, True Friends, yeah. how long it would stay. Because it came out and it was a simmering in the chart. Yeah. And Peter said to me, boy, it's going to be a number one. So I'm thinking, then when it got to number one, I'm saying, yeah, that's it. Okay. So I, I think he owed me some guineas for the amount a week that we bet. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, it was a good song. Why is music important to you? And what were your influences during your journey as an artist? Alright. Growing up in Jamaica, kind of old school. My sister had a record collection. I remember that clearly. And I used to go to her house and I loved playing records like Shy Lights, um, Brooke Benton. Um, she had quite a few artists, Johnny Mattis and some of them people. But I remember the groups mainly. Um, what's his name? Smokey Robinson, that was one of my favorite artists. Okay. And then we came into the Michael Jackson. Yeah, I was a fan of Michael Jackson. <laughs> Believe that. My first talent show was a Michael Jackson, our boss. Mash up the players, but yeah. So it was like that. And then um, I got my I, I got my sister bought to buy me one of them big boom box. So I started um, taping things and listening back to things. And you know, Jamaica is a, even though they play lots of dance, uh, the heartbeat of Jamaica is, is you know, the slow, yeah. nice, mushy, mushy. Because people hooked on Celine Dion and all them. Yeah. yeah, so it was like that. So there's a romantic side to a romantic side to most Jamaicans. So we was like that. Okay. So you know, I like that. <coughs> Your music has taken you around the world. Which countries have you performed in, and are there any that are memorable to you? Um, I remember. Uh, New York mostly because the place was um, filled with expats, British people, so they knew the music. Yeah. Even even today, still people ask, ask for lots of love. They don't get it as much as they should, but yeah. you know. And I always said to a couple of artists, that's the grounds we should be looking to, you know, get over there. It's not a matter whether they know us or not. Try break the ice. Yeah. Let people get to know you. Yeah. You know, yeah. but yeah, it's it's a whole different thing. But yeah, New York. Please tell the Fire Red family about your collaborations and, the, and your favorite songs. Your favorite songs. Well, the Fire Red, most know say I only got one collab and it was with um, what's his brother name? He was on um Sir Lloyd, a DJ. I forgot what his name was. We did one collab with him. Um, I think I did another with a brother called Major Maestro on the Jungle Rock label, but that was the only two. Okay, what what songs were they? Um. 
tell you which one. The first one was um, it's a cover on Sir I forgot the tune. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's why I like right my own music. I can't remember the tune, but it sounds good on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, would you mind sharing the current struggles a recording artist may face? UK yeah. wise. That's a good question. <laughs> no, it, 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 you see, when you because that's close to me. I don't think we're all united as we should be as an artist. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Growing up in Jamaica, I I could have got the chance to come here pr prior to me coming, yeah. and it, it's how the man they lived as a label. I was on the powerhouse label, and it, as as I said, run by George Brown. The man they had the opportunity to come here because we there was half pint. There was Conroy Smith and them people. Yeah. And even when I recorded the one song, they asked me, do I want to come? You know what I mean? But yeah. because I knew I was born here, I, did, I, I said, give it to another man. I'll make it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they didn't know that. Okay. You know what I mean? But the unity, you know, even if a man is not well known, if he's traveling, he's make sure putting feelers out so another man can. We, you know, there's so much talented artists here. And I, I think everybody's just on their ones. Yeah. The first thing I, 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 I noticed when I started recording was we're doing music and you know music is from the art, the love of music. I wasn't talking about financial, but the competition. Yeah. People feel like you're in, in competition with them or they feel threatened, you know yeah. what I mean? And I'm thinking, nah, I'm doing music, you're doing yours. We're two different artists, yeah. you know what I mean? Give the people a variety, but they don't get that. Yeah. You know, some people want to just, yeah, I'm that, you know what I mean? 90% of the time they don't cut it because yeah. it's not genuine. Yeah. When you go up there and sing with your heart, you know, not, not letting mo money motivate you, you, you perform good. Yeah. But I love music. You know, I've like I said to somebody, boy, I fall out of love with music, but you know something? I flipped it. I may have fallen out of love with music, but music ain't fall out of love with me because yeah. I'm still recording, I'm yeah. still writing. Yeah. So it's something I've always been passionate about. Yeah. yeah you know? What struggles have you faced as an artist in the music industry? <coughs> Just trying to find the right people to do music with. People that are sincere. You know what I mean? I'm not into the thing recording here, there and everywhere. You know what I mean? That's not how I want my business to be. Yeah. I do, just I just like to find a stable where we all know, yeah, we're putting in something. We're trying to make it big, you know? Not just put in and take out. Just let it grow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's how I look at music. Let it grow first because it can reach more. It don't have to be London-wise or Britain-wise. If you're pushing out the box, if you're pushing outside the box, you get people to listen. Yeah. A lot of people here, um, lovers rock through the internet these days, but still can't get it. <clears throat> yeah. And when I say can't get it, the shows. Yeah. You know what I mean? The performance to see artists one to one. When I went to um, Boston, funny, I, I got my, I didn't get to perform there, but I see people actually coming to meet me. Mm. Oh, you're here, you know what I mean? I, 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 these are people in abroad, and I'm thinking, wow, yeah, yeah they do see what we're doing. Yeah. So, 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 so do you think that's just a problem <coughs> in the lovers rocking genre or across the board? It's across the board. Um, no, in the genre, I, th I think it starts with distribution, there's not really a platform is there? How many places can we go and sit down and listen Lovers Rock live these days? It's not really much of a platform and the one people and the, who have the platform, you see what they're doing. Yeah, yeah it's true. Which other artists do you listen to? <sighs> As, I was growing up in Jamaica, Dennis Brown was my thing. But, you know, nowadays there's a variety of artists. You, you put, even upcoming artists I listen to these days. Because, you know, you want to keep current with certain things and everybody's performing good. Over here, like I said, I listen to Rogers have a new album out. I listen to it, uh, you know what I mean? So it's very, certain artists, if they've got new material and it's good, I listen to it. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always listening to music. Yeah. Okay. Have you people been surprised at the response from the UK music lovers to you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why are you surprised? Why have I been surprised? Um, first of all, 
the the response that you get from people it doesn't equate to the units that you sell and it's still it, 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 it's still every day that, that has me thinking wow yeah. I'm surprised at that because you know even when there's a show outside the amount of people that come out but who's buying the records yeah. it's true. you know what I mean it, does, it doesn't it doesn't add up what have you currently got? What have you got currently in your in the pipeline? Um, well, I've been writing some new music. People have been t I did a show the other day, and people have been saying, you know, even prior before that, so I need to come out with something new. And I'm thinking, yeah, I don't want to leave it too long. I, I, I'm, I, I usually do that, but you know, what I mean, this time I just want to come something new. Nice. And so I got a few. I got a few, at least about three songs already that I'm completely. Let's see how it goes. I was thinking of putting out an EP first before I do anything. Okay. And then I've already got songs that was re recorded already but still not released. Again, it's something I've got to catch up on to see. Okay. You know what I mean? But it's still moving. Still, well, you never stop singing, really. That's what I say to people, you know what I mean? Until my teeth them drop out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How can the Fire Red family keep in contact with you? Well, I think they have my number <laughs> for <a> some <summer. laughs> I'd like to think they have my number because this has been a long time coming. Yeah. And you know, they probably think I'm ducking and diving. <laughs> I, I was at the time. <laughs> you know, I needed to come and talk to Steve. Not to talk the same thing, you know what I mean? But yeah. Okay. So, um, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I think they put me on Instagram, my manager put me on Instagram. I looked at it once, but I haven't, you know, I haven't visited okay. anything, but I know definitely I'm on Twitter. As Neville Morrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah Neville Morrison, yeah. Okay. Feel, please feel free to make a shout out to your well wishes. Well, it's that time of the year, isn't it? Okay, so, to each and everyone out there. You know, big up, and I'm um, looking forward to some shows. I got I got a show coming up soon, so that'll be fun to see how that goes. But yeah, just wishing all the family and friends a blessed new year, and big up Firehead Crew too. 2020, different things, yeah. It has been an amazing honor interviewing you, and on behalf of the Firehead Station and Firehead family, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Fire Red, I'm giving you the best of me. 100% of me and more. You're the one I'm looking for. I'm giving you the best of me. 100% of me and more. You're the one that I adore. Blessed Fire Red, as we say, different things. <laughs>